I've got a bit of a gap in my scenery. To bridge that gap, I'm gonna need to build a bridge. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them, and if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. I've been wanting to install a bridge for a while now to finish out not only this road, but finish principal scenery on this section of the layout. And at the same time, I've been dragging my feet about it. What do I want to do? Do I want to kit bash? Do I want to scratch build with styrene? But if you know me, then you probably know by now what I intended to do. I'm going to 3D print a bridge. This is going to be a different 3D print than most of my past projects. For one, this is going to be a custom fit with some asymmetric angles to make it match. Two, the length I need to span is actually longer than my largest print bed, which is a Prusa Mini, so I would have to create some custom parts and essentially build a custom kit. Three, this is going to be a simple two-lane road, common concrete bridge. Nothing fancy, you see them all over the place. But I did want to have some of the nicer formed concrete guard barriers on the side that you tend to see on bridges built in the 1950s and 60s. So for those parts, I'm going to have to utilize my resonant 3D printer. So I'm creating my own little bridge kit. I have a plan, but I can guarantee you there will probably be issues. I start by measuring each road edge using a straight edge to get the distance from the road to the wall. This combined with a little bit of Pythagorean theorem gets me my edge length. I need to have two halves that I can print. So I design this with a sort of tongue and groove method of alignment. I then export the pieces and then put them into Prusa slicer and print them out. Next, I need to design and print the guardrails. I'm gonna go for a decorative K-rail style with a nice pattern. I design those in Tinkercad and export them out as well to print. These prints took about four hours in total running simultaneously. Once that was done, I brought the parts for the bridge span to the workbench. This is where I ran into a slight issue with the way the tongue and groove fit. The tongue was a little bit too wide, so I cut a little extra off of the groove and it fit like a glove. I then super glued the pieces together and weighed them down to dry. Once those were dry, I brought in my resin printed guardrails and super glued them in place. They had warped slightly during the curing process, even though I used very little curing time. So I used my 321 blocks to weigh them down in place so that they would dry in place. Now I have the bridge deck built, but it's still going to need one support in order to make it to where the future backdrop is. This is yet another custom piece that I will need to design. So I'll take this into Tinkercad, but the added difficulty is that this section of the layout is sloped. So I ended up deciding to build it like the real thing and dig a bit of a footing. And when I say dig, I mean I drilled a hole. And then once I had the initial part printed out with the support for the footing going in place, I use the 3D printed piece as a template to mark for where the holes that I need are, and then I drilled those holes. I then measured the bit and just kind of held it up against there to get one that would fit snug with the little supports for the footing that I had. Once the hole is drilled, I can test fit the support and it fits perfectly. Now I can lay the bridge deck on top of it. And this is where I encounter another issue. The bridge deck barely doesn't fit. To fix this, I need to cut the road back just a little bit. This is easy because this is just a sheet of styrene. Then I cut back some of the plaster as well so that it can fit snug down in the slot. Now that the bridge deck fits, I can glue the support and the deck together using some of that high viscosity super glue that I like. That'll be linked in the description below. I then place some weights on it while it's sitting in place so that it can dry at the proper angles. Once it is dry, I can remove it and paint the entire bridge. And as usual, I'm going to be using spray paint for this. Now it's an important thing to understand that when you are doing painting of 3D prints, you're typically gonna to want to prime them, especially if you're using a filament printer because you're still gonna have some gaps and it's gonna be like painting the equivalency of some porous wood. So you need to have that primer so that you can fill those gaps. 
I use Rust-Oleum's gray primer. It's just a solid primer, works great. And then once it's dried, I use my go-to concrete color, which is Rust-Oleum Aged Gray. Once that was dry, it was time to paint the lines. And I did this using the same technique that I do my road lines for the styrene roads. And I have an entire video on doing those roads that I'll link at the end of this video. Once that was done, I could finally place the bridge. I added a little scenery around it to begin blending it in, but I'll be doing a lot more work later on, including doing a lot more weathering of the bridge. I have said before that 3D printing has changed some of the many ways that model railroading was done in the past, and this is another great example of this. Before the introduction of 3D printing to the masses, this would have been a project for either kit bashing or scratch building. Both of those have a higher learning curve and require a lot more skill in order to achieve similar results. All 3D printing requires is a little know-how on a program like Tinkercad and a printer, and you can make your own custom creations to your heart's content. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.